Hi, I'm Alice. I'm the founder of Rose and I'm going to show you how to make a snood today. Um, I love wearing them over jumpers like these, over like anything really. <laughs> it goes with any outfit. Um, I also love it under coats. It's, they're so warm and I feel like they're really cool on top of knitwear. It kind of looks like you've got this elaborate neck, which I think is really cool. First, I'm going to show you what we need to make the snood. I don't have the snood with me, which is, I feel like on these videos, you have it to start with to be like, hey, this is what you're making, but I'm actually filming it in like the proper order. So I don't actually have it yet, but imagine the snood, like you've seen it on the front of the video. Um, oh, I could insert it here, actually. I feel like I've seen people do that. So there'll be like a little snood here, which would be cute. Um, ding. <laughs> Okay, so what you need is super chunky weight yarn. I think that's what it's officially classified as, but it, I think it falls in this kind of in-between weight of chunky and super chunky. It's not quite that massive yarn, but it's not quite chunky yarn. So an example of this is Wool and the Gang's Al Pacino Merino, which is the softest thing ever. I feel like you just cannot beat it. Um, but obviously it's a bit pricey, so equally we have a Drops yarn, which is Drops Andes, which is the exact same yarn, but just a bit less soft. <laughs> but in weight-wise, it's very, very similar. So both of these yarns work really well. Um, I have like a massive collection of scraps <laughs> from all my projects and everything, past work. Um, so I have kind of selected a few colours from my um, scrap collection to start with. So I'll try and hold them up. Ah, there you go. Um, so I've gone with this lovely cream colour, which goes with everything. Um, kind of this really nice purpley kind of, I love purple at the moment, but you can't really see it. It's not a bright purple, but a little bit purple. Um, and then this kind of crisp blue, which is another drops yarn. Um, and then it's kind of, I don't know what color this is. It's kind of a greeny yellow. I think it's quite nice though. Um, a hot pink because that always livens everything up. And this kind of, browny grey shade from Drops. Um, so if you're not familiar with the terms like super chunky, chunky, um, it has the tension of around, I think 13 stitches and 17, 18 rows. Um, but anything between 10 to 13 stitches and maybe 15 to 18 rows um, will work for this pattern. So kind of yarn choice is totally up to you. Um, I'm going to use some circular needles, which these are 5.5 millimeter needles, which is quite specific. Um, that's just because I feel like for me that gets like the very perfect tension for what we're working with. Um, because it's a rib, you're knitting on a bit smaller needles than you would normally for this yarn. Um, but I don't know, I feel like you could get away with definitely five millimeters. That's the most common size. It would 100% work with that. Or even I think you could probably do 6.5 millimeter and still get away with it. Um, it's knitted in the round, so we're going to use circular needles. These I think are about a 50 centimeter cord, but anything between a 40 to 60 centimeter cord, I think you could get away with. Um, so yeah, it's not too set with what you want to use. Because um, we're working the round, stitch markers are super handy. Oh, I actually have some really fun stitch markers um, that my friend Charlie makes, which she's the knit edit, which I'm sure you guys will know. So maybe I'll use a really fun one. I feel like I use them on different moods. If I'm feeling like serious, I'll use my really little one. And if not, I'll use my little cancer crab. So maybe we'll use our cancer crab. Um, so that's that. And then just scissors because we need to cut the yarns when we're using them. So that's quite important. Um, so yeah, you can use as many colors as you want for this project. As you can see, I've got like quite a lot of scraps. So it's really nice to use like multicolored um, in the snood, but 
obviously if you're buying the yarn you're probably not going to want to buy like six colors because it ends up quite expensive um but i mean if you are buying six colors you could probably make like six nudes so you could make a lot <laughs> if you're planning on bulk buying then it's worth buying like a few different colors to experiment with but i think this would equally work with kind of two three four colors and you could stripe it um like alternate the colors and make something really nice as well or even just yeah two colors and alternate it it would be really nice or you might even just want to go solid um the decision is totally yours um okay i'm rambling now so i'm gonna start um so yeah i will show you how to make this nude okay i just turned the camera around to show you how to cast on and realized it's better to show you this way um, so you can see my crazy contraption of what holds my camera when I'm actually knitting. <laughs> um, but yeah, to cast on, you need to pick your first colour, um, which I've chosen this colour to start. And we're going to do the long tail cast on. So for this cast on, you need to unravel a certain amount of yarn before you start. Um, and this will kind of like be the length you need to cast on so it's always a bit of a guess to be honest I know there's like people have all these kind of ways they do it like it's four times the size of the snood or something like that but I always wing it to be honest so I'm gonna say seven we're casting on 70 stitches so maybe do like one length and then maybe two lengths I think that will be enough yarn, maybe too much yarn, but we can try it. Okay, so I'm going to switch to the other angle now so you can see. So on one side you've got your yarn attached to the ball, and the other side you've got the yarn you've just wound off, and you just need to put your needle underneath like this. Then to start the long tail cast on, you just need to insert your thumb and index finger through the yarn like so and you can hold your other thumb on the yarn on the needle like I am there. This is going to look a bit crazy but you twist your thumb and then you take your needle under this strand of yarn like that and then you take it over the other strand of yarn like this. And then you bring that through the gap there and let go and pull it through and I'll show you that again so thumb and index finger through the yarn and then you twist your thumb and take your needle under that strand of yarn and then under that strand of yarn like that and pull it through and then you can let go of everything and pull the yarn and there you can see we've now cast on three stitches so you just keep doing this until you've got 70 stitches on your needle. So here's my 70 stitches and what we need to do is we need to check this line here where you can see all the stitches is straight so you don't want that twisted. If that's twisted then your snood will end up twisted so it won't work. So you just need to make sure that your stitches are all straight and there's no twist. So now we're ready to start working in the round. So I'm just gonna move my needles like this. Um, and then what we're gonna do is we're going to take our stitch marker and you're going to place this on the right hand needle and this will mark the start of each round. So there you go. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna join to start working in the round. And there's different ways of doing this, but this is my way. So I insert the right needle into the first stitch on the left needle, like this. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take both strands of yarn, so the yarn tail and also the yarn attached to the ball. So you can see one is attached to the ball and the other is the yarn tail. And I'm gonna knit the first stitch with both of them. So I'm gonna complete a knit stitch, like so. And then that's how I join in the round, basically. So for the next stitch, you're gonna insert the needle in the same way, but you're just gonna pick up the yarn attached to the ball. So you leave the yarn tail, that was just for the first stitch and just this one. And then you, you want to wrap the yarn around the needle and pull it through for a knit stitch. So we're gonna knit three stitches. So we've got one more to knit. So insert the needle, then wrap the yarn and pull it through. 
and now we're going to purl two stitches so we're going to take the yarn to the front of the work like this and then we're going to insert the needle into the stitch this way and wrap the yarn this way and pull it through and slip it off the needle like so. So we need one more purl stitch so I'm going to purl this stitch so again inserting the needle wrapping and pulling down and off the needle. So what we're going to do is repeat this sequence the entire round so that's knit three purl two and you just repeat this the whole round and that's the same repeat you do for every single round so you're just knitting three and purling two. I'm just knitting the last stitch of the round and then you can see we've reached the stitch marker so all you do is slip the stitch marker from the left needle onto the right needle and that continues to mark the start point and you're going to do this every single round. So now you can see we've knitted one round so I'll show you how it looks you can't really see that much yet um, but we're just going to continue knitting now so to start the next round you literally just start the next stitch by knitting it so you just continue past the stitch marker and continue the repeat which is knit three and purl two you do this exact same thing for every round so you work as many rounds as you want in this color knitting three and purling two So once you've finished with the first colour, you just need to cut the yarn, leaving approximately a 15 centimetre yarn tail, like that. And then what we're going to do is bring the yarn to the back of the work, just so it's out of the way, like that. Um, and then you can slip the stitch marker over onto the right needle. And all we're going to do is insert the needle into the first stitch of the round, like this. And then we're going to take our second colour, which is my purple, and I'm just going to wrap it over the needle. And you need a, to leave approximately, again, a 15 centimetre yarn tail, so you can weave this in. Um, but all you're going to do is start knitting with this colour. So you just place it over the needle and pull it round to give it a bit of tension and then pull it through the stitch like a normal knit stitch like this. Now some people tie the yarn ends at the back um, which you can do if you're worried about a hole developing or the stitches becoming loose you can just make a, a very loose knot so you can undo it at the end and weave it in. Um, that's also totally fine. Um, so now we're just going to continue knitting so again doing knit three purl two all the way around um, and working as many rounds as you like in this colour. Every time you want to change colour just use this method again. So once you've decided that's your last colour and your last row, you need to cast off your stitches. So to cast off, what you need to do is insert your needle into the first stitch as if you were going to knit it and then wrap the yarn and knit the stitch and pull it off the needle. And then you're going to knit one more stitch, so you've knit two. Oh, do that one again <laughs> and then what you're going to do is insert your left needle into that first stitch knitted through the front of the stitch like so and then you're going to pull that one over the other one like so and that's casting off one stitch so to continue what you're going to do is knit the next stitch on the left hand needle and then you're going to take that first stitch and lift it over the stitch just knitted, 
like so. Sometimes you need to pull the yarn at the back just to ensure it stays on the needle like so. Now we're casting off in ribbing so you can see we've knitted three and cast them off. Now you've reached two purl stitches. The next stitch you actually now need to purl. So you purl all the purl stitches and knit all the knit stitches. That's how to remember it. So you're purling the next stitch and doing exactly the same as what you did before. You're inserting your needle through the front of that first stitch and lifting it over the stitch just knitted. And then as this next stitch is a purl stitch, we're going to purl it as well and then do the exact same. And you repeat this the whole way around. It's really important on this cast off to do it really loosely because if you do it tight, it won't fit over your head. So it's really important to do this loose. If you can't get it loose enough, I suggest using a bigger needle size. And this really helps to create this loose and stretchy cast off. So once you have cast off your last stitch, it will look something like this. So you've still got the stitch on your needle. You just need to cut your yarn, leaving a yarn tail. And then all we're going to do is pull on the needle until the yarn tail pops through. So now all the knitting is done for the snood. What we're going to do is we're going to turn it inside out and you can see all these bits which need weaving in. Um, so I'm going to show you how to finish it off now. So I'm going to show you on the blue section because this will be easy to see. So I'm going to take my yarn tail and a blunt tapestry needle. So it's got quite a big eye and a blunt end. And we're going to thread the needle with the yarn tail. And then what we're going to do is we're going to follow the stitches with our needle. So you can see they kind of make the zigzag round like this. And we're going to follow that through with our needle so if you take follow one strand of the yarn and you can see where it goes and you can see it forms this shape so i'm going to insert my needle through and follow the stitches and it's just mimicking the stitches and for this i'm doing it on the inside of the work so i'm doing it on the wrong side of the work but you can also do it on the right side of the work it doesn't really make much difference but you can see i'm just pulling my needle through where the yarn is already going and mimicking it around like that and you're literally just weaving it in where the yarn has formed the stitches like so so that's the purl section and then for the knit section you can see that it continues under this one and then you can see it makes a new shape which you can see these v's so i'm going to follow the v around so go behind there and round so behind and i'm running out of yarn tail now so this might get a bit messy so we're going to go through there and you just need to weave it in a decent amount so it's not going to come undone. I'm going to try to do one more stitch, but I think this might come out now. Um, so yeah, I've only got a little bit left. So I'm going to try and pull it through. Eee, sometimes can be a little bit tricky, as you can see. <laughs> okay, I'm going to making a bit of a mess of this. <laughs> try and pull it through anyway. Okay, I'm going to rethread. Come on. Yeah, there we go. And pull it through. And I'm not going to push my look and do another one. So I'm just going to trim that little end now. And you can see where we've travelled. So I'm just going to take my scissors and cut that end now. And that is secure. So for the next yarn tail, I'm going to show you a different way. And this only works on kind of a knit stitch. So where you've got the Vs, this only works to weave in this way. So I'm going to thread my yarn again. And we're going to be working vertically down one of these sections like this. So we're only going to be working kind of downwards and again, mimicking the stitches. But you're mimicking these stitches this time. So what I'm going to do is you can follow where that stitch goes through, which is there. So this is the one we're mimicking. We're going to go through, kind of works out every other stitch eventually. So we're going to go through this one 
and we're going to pull the yarn tail through and you can see it's mimicked how that looks there so again you're going to follow the next one and you can see it kind of skips that and then goes into this one and you're going to pull it through and you can see how that's starting to look um, and you kind of continue this way you're kind of twisting it around the stitches until I guess the end of the section um, and then you can just pull it through that last stitch and then I'm going to trim the yarn and that's the second method. So you just need to weave in every yarn tail now. Um, I'd say that second technique is a little easier but maybe a little bit less secure so I sometimes use a bit of a combination of the two. As I said before, um, I would weave in all the yarn tails on the wrong side of the work, apart from the cast on and cast off yarn tails. So for that, I'm going to go to the right side of the work and just show you how to weave in the cast on yarn tail. So I'm going to thread my needle with the yarn tail. Um, and the reason I do it from this side is more so you can see how it looks on the right side of the work. So you can see here, it's already quite neat. Um, but I'm just going to kind of mimic the stitches and follow the cast on edge, which follows, goes that way. Um, so you can see the stitches are slanting that way. Um, so I'm going to take the needle and pull it through one like that and just pull it together. And as you can see, that just kind of closes any kind of gap there. Um, and then what I'm going to do sometimes it's easier actually now to turn it inside out and then you can use one of the methods that I showed you before to um, secure the rest of it. So it's good to kind of see how the join's looking on the outside but then I just continue weaving in on the inside like so. So now we're going to do the same for the cast off edge which is this one and we're going to take the needle through these stitches here so that's the next stitch there which is like this and we're just going to pull it through this one and close that step so you can see that's closed quite nicely um, and again we're just going to mimic the stitches and pull it through another one here and pull it again and you can see that's looking quite nice on that side um, and then on the inside we're just gonna do what we did before and weave in the rest of the yarn tail. So now we have our lovely finished snood. Um, you may notice that it's quite thin so you may be thinking oh that doesn't quite look like how it's supposed to look but that's because it's a rib stitch and rib is super stretchy so you can see it's going to stretch right over our head and that's like perfect for a snood um so then it gets smaller as it's around your neck um however to even the stitch out i like to block my snoods um now blocking is a lot scarier than it sounds it's actually just another word for washing <laughs> like a very easy washing process um washing and drying essentially and that will just give the snood its form um so i like to block because i mostly use natural fibers so this snood is made from alpaca and wool um and a combination of the two which when washed, so especially wool, anything with wool content, you wash it and it immediately softens up and it's really, really nice. Um, so that's the main reason I block things and also for shape. So maybe you're using a cotton yarn or a vegan yarn or something which won't soften up in the wash. Maybe you don't really want to block it. That's absolutely fine. Um, I'm blocking because I'm using a wool content yarn and I want a bit more of a, a different shape so when we block it it'll stretch out a bit nicer. Um, so I'm going to show you how to block, it's super easy and I'll do it quick. Place your snood in a bath or sink of cold water for 15 minutes then you can drain the water and squeeze out any excess moisture. Then place it on a towel, roll up the towel really tightly and this just gets rid of any excess moisture. Then leave it on a blocking board or a towel until it's completely dry.